Welcome to the Tech Today podcast powered by CEO Raider. It's your host, John Mayetta. We've published a number of articles over the past few days, a couple of articles on solar winds. It's clear that that breach is, is still unfolding, and we may never have the perpetrators fully eradicated from every system that they've infiltrated. It, it's going to be a long road to recovery for solar winds. We put out a piece yesterday about Palantir and how, in our view, that company is, is not a software company, but rather a services company with a software wrapper. And if you look at Palantir's P&L and you see that G&A, excluding stock comp, is 37% of revenue, that's a, a goofy number. A, t- a typical enterprise software company would have G&A in kind of the, the 10 to 12% range, X stock comp, 10 to 12% as a percentage of revenue. And uh, for companies that run a, a, a tight ship, I've seen G&A, I want to say is as low as 8% on the enterprise software side. And even if you're a, a rapidly growing company, typically where you would scale OpEx as a percentage of revenue is in the sales and marketing line and R&D but predominantly in, in sales and marketing. You would grow that as a percentage of revenue, not the G&A line. G&A may, may spike a, a little bit by a, a couple percentage points during an IPO but when you have to hire a bunch of lawyers and, and such and you know, get your filings through the SEC, hire bankers, and, and that type of thing. But but nothing warrants G&A at, at, at 37% of revenue for Palantir or for any software company, frankly, or any services company. And so... In, in our view, it's, it's pretty clear that parent Palantir allocated a portion of cost of goods sold to the GNA line in order to arrive at a gross margin in the 80% range, which puts Palantir in line with software companies, thus enabling Palantir to command a, an equity valuation in line with enterprise software companies on its recent IPO. So, that's the issue we have with, with Palantir. I'm surprised the SEC allowed them to, to get away with allocating a portion of, of COGS into GNA. But, you know, that's obviously not for me to decide. But the truth is in the numbers. So they are definitively not a software company, even though their advanced analytic capabilities are delivered through a software interface. At the end of the day, it's the, the data and the analytic capability that that Palantir is delivering co- to, to customers that, that, that provides customer value. It's not the software wrapper. Palantir, like many services companies, is marked by big, heavy deployments. That's why they're currently on a X stock comp basis, roughly at around break even, a very negligible operating loss. I think the number is 800,000 operating loss. At a billion plus of revenue, that number should be significantly higher. Even given Palantir's revenue growth, you would expect a, a, an enterprise software company at, at that growth, growth rate to have an operating margin in the 20% range, maybe a bit higher. If uh, Palantir were truly an enterprise software company and running top-line growth in the single-digit range, you would expect operating margins to be north of 35 perhaps even north of, of 40%. And so regardless of how large Palantir eventually scales from a revenue standpoint, they're never going to have software-like operating margins. If, if growth slows with Palantir, my guess is if they really run things tight, they could get operating margins to 20%, but that'll probably be a ceiling. My guess would be when growth ultimately slows, they'll probably sit around a, a mid-teens, low-teens operating margin like uh, many services companies do. But they'll never achieve a 30-plus percent, 40-plus percent operating margin once revenue does slow because of the fact that the company structurally is not an enterprise software company. Those big, heavy deployments that I mentioned, those big, heavy installations uh, to get customers to go live will always be a drag on, on margins and profitability. That's all for now. See you next time.